We're taking a step forward for the world, and then we're we're gonna be like the biggest difference. Because without us knowing about all the green stuff, we cannot lead anyone else in the community to be a part of this action. It's a, a real credit to the city planners and uh, engineers to make this a easily to get around city. I think if we can um, take some of those lessons around the world, I think there's no reason why we can't. Uh, and also harnessing some of the, the natural beauty and resources, you know, run of river projects, all these kind of things, tidal, geothermal, all these things, I think we could uh, totally achieve it. It's a very interesting time right now. Um, future seems to be on everybody's mind. We've got fuel spills in English Bay. We've got fires choking the skies this summer. We, we continue to battle over who owns the lands and the waters that we cherish. Um, and we have some very, very big decisions that we need to make. So over the last six years, we've directly and deeply engaged over 35,000 residents and 180 organizations to undertake more than 150 different policy initiatives. This year is the halfway point and we are getting very strong results. The most exciting news, um, this past year in May 2015, we reached our 2020 goals for transportation. In six years, we've moved to the position where now more than half of all trips made in the city of Vancouver are made by biking, walking, or transit. And we've exceeded the goal for vehicle kilometers traveled. So earlier this year, Vancouver made the commitment to shift to 100% renewable energy from all sources for transportation, for electricity, and heating and cooling. They don't clean up, and, and, and it's 20% is the best case scenario where well, they'll clean up a disaster. And we're left, we're left with a mess. We're left with a mess, and, and you know, what we estimate is 500,000 birds die, one million people get sick. But right here, my mom, she told the nation and eventually told the world, and she said, well, let's warrior up. Let's do something about it. Let's change it. Let's stand up for what we believe in in our future generations. The bike industry is aware that it has a problem, and the League of American Cyclists commissioned this study. They went into bike shops and talked to bike shop owners and customers and staff and came up with a list of recommendations for making more inclusive environments, which I think are really relevant to all of us here in this room who are trying to build movements that include more different kinds of people. Women are an awesome group to start with because we're 52% of the population. Once upon a time, people were born into communities and had to find their individuality. Today, people are born individuals and have to find their communities. As when you look inside a dumpster, you see an enormous amount of treasures, I call it. A perfectly edible food. You see the carrots and the melons, they look perfectly fine. It's just the shape is a little bit larger or not the right shape for the supermarkets. Food waste happens around 50% in our own homes. And so Lo uh, Love Food Hate Waste is a campaign that Metro Vancouver launched kind of around the same time as we did the Feeding the 5,000 to connect people to tips um, on how to practically reduce food waste in their own lives. Now Trans Mountain says that the risk of a spill is low, but they've underestimated the risk because they haven't evaluated the consequences of a spill in Burrard Inlet. They've just assumed it could never happen here. And if risk assessments are going to be robust, they have to look at all the possible scenarios. While the likelihood of a spill may be low, the consequences would be devastating. It's kind of like an earthquake. So what's at risk? Pretty much everything we love about Vancouver and a few more things. It's our, our seawall, our beaches, our amazing views. It's the clean environment that gives us a healthy place to live, work and play. It's also thousands of jobs and millions of dollars to our economy. So what do we need? I mean, we need more activist innovators because innovation and creativity applied to green products, lifestyles, technologies and structures is great but we need people applying these same kinds of creative talents to the big challenge, messy as it is, of politics and policy. The